hello, hello. We made it to another key transit video. We did it. We're here. We're doing this thing. So excited. It's perfect because this week we're going to be having the new moon in Leo. So in quantum human design, that's gate four of possibility. And in the gene keys, that is key number four, a shadow of intolerance, the gift of understanding, and the city of forgiveness. So what I love about what uh, Karen Curry Parker brings up about the gate four of possibility is that it's our constant seeking for um, answers, that we always want the answer to something. So every time we think we have an idea, we think the idea is the answer, right? And for those of us that are creatives, you know, hey peoples, you my peoples. <laughs> so if you are creative, then you have a lot of ideas. And if you think every idea is the answer to fixing a problem or is the answer to making the one thing work in, in, in your business, or if you think it's like the answer to, like, so if you think one person or one course is the answer to everything, then we start to get stuck, okay? Because um, the shadow of intolerance is essentially leaning us toward this understanding that we are hanging on to absolutes in order to explain the unexplainable. Right? And so we run into this problem with science and spirituality, and we want our brains and our logic to find the conclusive answer to all things, right? We want the conclusive answer, um, the right way of doing something. And whenever we're stuck with that, we can always use an oppositional logic in order for us to actually learn the exact opposite of what we're trying to prove. And so anytime you use an absolute, this is one of the hardest things I have about like making content and doing the social media thing is that there are so many so very assertively sure people out there <laughs> stating their ideas as if they're the cure-all for everybody. And, uh, and what we understand or what we are growing to understand in our evolution and our work and our shadow work and our spirituality is that there is no cure-all. There's no cure-all for for everybody, right? We all have different needs of support and how it looks for our cure or what it looks like when we are in balance is completely different than how it looks for other people. So our productivity may look different than somebody else. Our, our health may look different than somebody else. And that can be a, a lot of different factors. Um, and so learning what our point of stability is and our point, our growing edge, which is we all have them. So we can all, yes, we can all have yet another more beautiful thing. But the reality is, is that there's never going to be an answer to everything. And it's not that one answer is not going to be the answer for everybody. So we, we, it's really about starting to understand <laughs> the gift. The gift is about understanding, realizing that that it may not look the same and um and one of the things that's really amazing about this is that it also is reminding us that um that we're not here to to have answers right we're here to explore we're here to experience we're here to ask questions right so what does this mean? What does this mean? We're going to get to like what this is going to, how we're going to apply this to our content, what content we want to share this week in just one second. But first I want to talk a bit about um, kind of sensing those needs that how somebody may be shaping up a little differently than what your current understanding of, ex of experience and answers give. Um, and stay open to, staying open to that. But I also want to talk about uh, a little bit about how the angles are affecting us and what we can maybe focus on on ourselves if we are having uh, challenging times with the current energies, which I think, uh, you know, a lot of us that are sensitive often have kind of repercussions of being sensitive to the energy, especially if we're, we're it's the energy we're still learning, we're still understanding. Um, and so, yeah, and so, yeah, a lot of my people 
really love like data driven, science driven, co concrete understanding. And this energy may be challenging for them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what the challenges may be showing up. Okay. Um, one of the challenges is that it's going to look like everything that maybe that you've been doing isn't working or won't work. And then you have that you might have to change it completely. And yet that changing, whatever is like pointing that change out to change completely is exactly what you need. You need that change, right? Um, and, just ex and if we had any such thing as an answer, it is in the movement itself. It is in the change itself. It is in the what is allowing things to continue to move and flow, right? And so instead of looking for the answer, which is the end all goal point of, and you have finished, right? Like <laughs> that whole thing that we've been taught to do is be the first to the finish line. Um, instead of that context, let's talk about like how we're going to feel amazing and the, like we never ran the way we ran ever before because of the way we changed how we decided to move into action, right? Um, another thing that's going on is that a lot of the irritations that are showing up in, um, in the chart, and I am kind of using the Western chart to reference this. So, I'm, I'm, uh, so again, if you're like in a different chart, if you're in the Vedic chart, if you are talking, uh, you know, it's really, you know, if you're talking about Western chart versus the human design chart, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just one has keys, one has um, astrological signs. So it's, it is what it be. Uh, I do believe that human design, uh, they're more specific because there's more of them, there's 64. Anyways, all of that to say <laughs> that there is a shrine in the, the earth signs, okay? So um, earth signs, am I saying earth signs? Yeah, trying with the earth signs and actually Pisces. So Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Uh, there's a bit of a trine bath. Right, so if you are having any kind of experiences and what it looked like it was going to be permanent, again, the end goal, um, that it seemed like it was all lining up, what is gonna happen is that it's at minimum, it's gonna be irritated. At minimum, you're gonna question it, okay? But that's the whole point, that, that's the whole point. That's the whole point of Duke and Leah. We're gonna start questioning instead of assuming that all of our ideas are the answer, right? So we're going to be co-creating by allowing for the possibility. So that's the personal part, okay? So in the content, I think it, because we're all asking these questions, we might as well understand what are the possibilities um, when somebody decides to work with us, when decides to buy our product, what are those possibilities? So it's a great time to talk about what possibilities open up to people when they get to connect with you and your product or and or the product, okay? Um, what questions are your clients asking? Maybe you can ask those questions and answer them in a blog or a post or something and see if the questions that your clients are asking are actually the, the right questions. Why are they the ones that are opening up the possibilities that you want to share with them? And why are they maybe questions that are closing that possibility and not helping them along that path, right? Um, and what answers do they want that you may have an understanding that um, it's not so much about the answer, but about the experience. So if you're somebody like me, who your, your work is about service, about experience, about journeying, about going down the path or the process towards um, living and being in a certain way, this is a great, great week to talk about what you do because it's not about having the ultimate answer, but finding your path, right? And how you help people see that their path may be aligned to yours, right? Um, and so it's, I think it's fun. I love that. I love that so much. Other considerations is, the programming partner, so in um, human design, gene keys, the programming partner is essentially the opposition you would find in the Western chart. That is Aquarius, um, 
18 to 24 degrees. And it is actually, it was actually the, um, what do you call it? Oh, blinking and blinking. Oh, it's the channel partner. Was the channel completion I mean, of the of the key for the full moon? Oh my god! Right, like it's it's really I want to see if that's something that happens all the time. I've never noticed that before. Anyways, in that opposition, it's giving us a reflection. Are we are is our intolerance putting us in in reaction? Is our ability is our holding really tightly to absolutes? keeping us from moving from being in um in becoming understanding from shifting into a higher vibration right um are we stuck in reaction to in order to prove that we were right about a past thing when we are really supposed to be moving forward to a new thing so that again those are aspects that may be happening for your clients what are they holding on to that needs to shift Right, that and a good way to find that is that you know what questions are still on the table and what questions may actually serve them a little bit better. The right question, y'all, is invaluable. If you only find somebody who's asking the right questions online, uh, you might actually learn more <laughs> than is somebody who is just telling you their absolute truths that um, they think you should uh, be able to make a perfect life out of. Okay, so um, the channel completion for this new moon instead of the full moon, the full moon was the last two weeks of, of, of that last date, 49. And this um, channel completion, so how we are merging those energies for the highest outcome um, is in Pisces. That's kind of fun. What's uh, people who may be following this from Western astrology charts, it is not the Pisces that's having an actual, oh, the Queen Cox angle with Neptune. It is, um, it is not uh, close enough for that relationship, but it's still something to think about because in order for the reason, the reason why we need to, or we <laughs> don't need to do anything, but the reason why we um, experiences may be more fulfilling if we are in the living in the possibilities and the questions and seeing how our ideas are are revealing what's next and what uh, what more is available. Then um, we want to look at all like why is that happening? So that's what we're looking at here at the channel completion in Pisces, right? Um, is about moving from doubt to inquiry. So it's uh, giving us the answer here, folks. So it's saying, like, instead of just doubting until you have an absolute answer, stay in the, the attitude of the presence, the experience of inquiry. I call it experimenting. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I do this idea, what happens, right? Um, and it's really asking us to let go of absolutes, right? And the more we're willing to let go of those absolutes, the more our understanding is going to open up, where we see more possibilities, more opportunity, more expansion, and it will result ultimately, as these energies converge, it will result in some maximum manifestation and, and then um, like whatever that that focus point, that awareness that you're trying to bring into reality, like the answer for now, possibly, <laughs> it depends on what way for you. So if you, the more you know about your chart, the more you'll understand like what this means for you. Um, and if you don't know your chart, you don't need to know everything about astrology. You can check your body, check your breath, check your voice and speak the questions, speak the ideas, and see how they are resonating or not resonating with you, okay? You can be your own direction. You don't really need all these tools, but me and my brain, I gotta, I gotta give it something to do, right? So this is why I love this stuff. <laughs> I just love the beauty and the synchronicities that um, doing this work that gives, and it gives so many affirmations as well that you're, you know, when you are doubting, 
when you're in that doubt, sometimes it's nice to have a little light to shine a possibility path for you. So be that for your clients this week. Be that light that shines a possibility path for those who are looking for it. And I will see you all on the next transit video. Hot ta for now. Thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate you being here. And if I don't see you in, in chat on YouTube, then I'd love to see you at one of my events. Check my links in the comments.